This killing, this decapitation of Hamas was really a function of happenstance. Apparently, um, a group of trainee tank commanders who were seconded from their training base to the Gaza offensive spotted a number of gunmen in a building in the south of Gaza yesterday, opened fire. Mm. And this morning, when they returned on foot to scour the ruins and see who was there, they found what appeared to them to be Sinwar from a basic physical match. Apparently, another of the bodies belonged to a battalion commander from Hamas who was known to have effectively been Sinwar's military secretary. So they added those findings together. There are photographs of his teeth that were matched to dental records, apparently fingerprints, mm. DNA tests. And in recent minutes, the, uh, the word has come through officially that indeed it is Yehya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas in Gaza, the overall leader of Hamas, is dead. Well, so what happens next within the ranks of Hamas, Dan, as the Israeli foreign ministry in its statement pointed out that his death creates a possibility for what they say is an immediate release of the abductees that were taken on October 7th. Who would it be negotiating that on behalf of Hamas now? That, that's an excellent question. It's unclear. Netanyahu may shed some light on that question. I think what's clear is Israel, which set out at the beginning of this war, a war that's now more than a year old, its core aim of destroying, demolishing Hamas, eradicating it as a military threat, as a governing force, that still holds. So I don't think Israel is looking for a successful succession um, within Hamas Gaza or even Hamas abroad. I think what they're looking for is members of Hamas that are willing to step away from the organization, maybe cut a deal for their own survival, perhaps some kind of reward, and deliver those um, hostages, as many of, po as, as many of them alive as possible. So there will be a big question about succession. Hamas has not formally confirmed yet uh, Sinwar's death. That could be just be a function of logistics because Israel's had possession of his body since he was killed. Hamas may simply no have, not have a way of corroborating his death themselves. They may also be conferring as much as possible about succession. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth noting that if they choose someone from within mm -hmm. Gaza, and uh, Sinwar was very much a Gaza figure, then that will allow them to keep portraying themselves as resisting the Hamas offensive, surviving despite this really crushing offensive in Gaza, at least for the time being. But that successor will be living on borrowed time and on the run without much of a public mm. profile at all. If they choose yeah. a, a leader, a replacement from outside Gaza, say one based in Qatar or, or, uh, or uh, Turkey, for example, or Lebanon, then that man may have survivability, but it would really seem to be now an organization in exile rather than an organization that actually had its own mini state in Gaza for something like 17, 18 years. Wow, that's an important characterization, Dan. In that case, should we anticipate any response from Hamas? And what would be the reaction in Gaza and on the streets of Tehran to this headline? I think there'll be shock, but I think that given you, you alluded to Tehran, Hamas, this began as a Gaza war, but it really is a region-wide war between Israel and an yeah. Iranian axis, including even Iran itself. Keep in mind that over two weeks ago, Iran um, fired uh, some 200 ballistic missiles at Israel. We're still waiting for Israel's retaliation and for Iran's retaliation for the retaliation, which would really open up a, a new front, a long-distance front in this multi-front war. So the Iranian reaction will be of great interest, but I imagine they're still taking aboard the fact that Israel just a few weeks ago decapitated Hezbollah with the killing in Beirut of the Hezbollah leader. Um, Hassan Nasrallah. So really, this has been a cascade of decapitations. I think it would be fair to say that militarily, in terms of leadership, organizationally, the Iranian access, these various proxies on Israel's border are really on the ropes. Mm. And they may be weighing mm. their actions and even their words very, very carefully. Um, Hamas and Gaza will want to react, but I don't think they have the ability militarily. Just a few days ago, um, the region, Israel, the world marked the first anniversary of the October 7th Hamas mm -hmm. attack, which began this war. Back on October 7th, 2023, they fired between three and 4,000 rockets um, to, to really um, sandbag Israel as they sent over fighters to carry out a mass killing and, 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 and abduction campaign. On the anniversary, they wanted to show that they were still there, but they fired something like 14 rockets. So 14 compared mm. to 4,000 rockets a year prior gives you a yeah. pretty good idea of where Hamas stands militarily nowadays. And Hezbollah is keeping up its fire well, from Lebanon, but that has also been reduced by Israeli precision strikes. So I'm not sure militarily they're in a position to escalate. 
I think they'll be weighing strategy very carefully. And indeed, there may be elements of Hamas in Gaza that decide it's time to cut a deal. It's time to survive, maybe accept exile um, and life in exile rather than death in Gaza. And if the cost is releasing, returning some or all of those hostages, that may be an appealing prospect for some of them.